right, today is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, amen. Today's a new day, great day, grand day, and I'm coming back with another video. Hey, hey, this video here is a redo makeover of my living room, dining room, living area. Um, Y'all, I've been living in this apartment for almost three years, and I was just tired of it. I'm like, I need to give me a little something, something, okay? So, um, this was super affordable, like... It was less than $50, less than 30 like literally like these makeovers, I'm not spending barely any money. I'm just using what I got and adding the little things here and there to make it like, wow. But anyway, so right now I am removing everything out the way and um, I'm going to try to be minimal on my talking, but y'all know I like to talk, so it is what it is but before I stop talking make sure you guys are subscribed make sure you give this video a thumbs up but let's get into the video to measure and see how um how to measure though the the length of the wall because originally I was going to paint the whole entire wall but then reality slapped me in the face that like I'm five foot two and a half and I have no ladder so Sabrina how are you going to paint a whole entire wall well, I'm just saying like yeah so I had big dreams but then I had to come into reality so I end up painting half of the wall that's the reason why I did half because I could go no higher but it still came out cute though I tell you that much but anyway so I am measuring um where this kind of I wouldn't really call it a bar but that little um shelf or whatever counter you top you want to call to see how um how was it how tall it is to make sure that it's even because I don't want to have one side of my wall high up you know with the with the paint and the other side not and it's just gonna look wonky now it's time to paint okay first of all um i know y'all gonna say something about why you got all these clothes on while i was recording this video we <laughs> texas was in the middle of like a polar vortex we had like a whole antarctica just slap us in the face so that with that being said i was cold okay yes i have socks on and shirts and hoodies but guess what i was warm though but anyway 
I uh, just want to also want to let y'all know I am not a professional painter, nor am I claiming to be, nor is this really a tutorial. This is more of a like an inspiration, a motivation, you know what I'm saying, to get you guys ready. And then for those who are like me, to get the courage to like, you know what, you can do this too, boo. You ain't gotta be Picasso. Picasso. I mean Picasso. So you can get up and paint too, okay? Anyway, but with that being said, I said I'll let to say that because um, I bought the plastic little sheet thingamabobber and I was like, oh, maybe I don't need it. But then I realized, yes, you do need it because that's the reason why you bought it. And so, yeah, don't be like me and be lazy and think you can cut quarters. No, put all your stuff out like you're supposed to and take your time. Do not rush it. Um, that's one thing I did learn about painting with this being my first time painting. Take your time, soft brush strokes. Yeah, soft brush strokes is where it's at. You do not need to like, you know, go off fast and slap it because then it gets messy and it don't look cute. So definitely want to put that out there. Once I'm done with the corners and everything, then in the ledges, I um, got my little roly paint brush. Um, I poured a little bit in the little paint bucket thing. Um, with that sponge thing, rollers, uh, you know what? Y'all know I'm not a painter, so I don't know what it's called, but y'all follow me, follow me. The little roly spongy thing of my bobber, I did damp it with a wet um, cloth when I was painting. Um, that just helps um, the paint to stick on there. Also, when I started painting, I only put a dab of paint, okay? I didn't dip it in there and um, you don't need a lot. Let's just say a lot goes a long ways with this paint, especially when you got the roller mabobber. That's the name, I'm sticking to it, don't y'all hate. So once, um, yeah, once you get the roller mabobber, nice, you know, with a little bit of dab of paint rolling around that sucker and then I also wanted to be let you know that my walls are textured walls so I have to go several different angles to make sure that I covered all the spots as well um, I also with that same damp cloth that I use to um, wet the roller my bobber I use it to um, wipe up any like um, the paint when it kind of like goes over the ledge or it kind of goes onto something. I um, use it, you know, to clean it up.
I also wanted to let you know that I did not paint the full wall where my that dresser goes because one um that outlet I did not want to unplug because my deep freezer is plugged to that outlet so if I unplug that then yeah we ain't trying to have them problems and two my dresser is going to stay there my dresser is never going to move that is its permanent set um place until i move out of um my place so therefore i was all like why am i painting all that that's i'm being extra and then those two hooks is where the dresser is anchored to the wall because y'all know i got kids and um when i have heavy pieces of furniture i always make sure it's anchored to the wall so it's like look it i found this spot i'm not about to waste paint for a spot that ain't nobody gonna see anyway you know what i'm saying so i just want to let that um i just want to let y'all know because i know somebody's gonna ask i also want to put out their disclaimer i probably should put this in the beginning of the video um my i do rent and my apartments do allow me to paint my walls as long as i um paint paint them back to the original color when i move so with that being said i just want to let you know yes i already know i mean my landlord and everything they they're okay with it and you know i'm not doing nothing you know against the lease or you know messing up people's property or anything okay so i decided to do an arch and so what I am doing is measuring how far I want the arch to go outside of my breakfast bar. And and I, I know what I'm going to hang on the wall in that area. So I'm just trying to see how I want it to look. So now I'm measuring that part. Find, I'm measuring the distance. And then once I see how long it's going to be, then I also see where the middle part is going to be. So I can have my circle to do the arch, if that makes sense. I'm going to have to do like a detailed video if you guys want. There's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to make these arches. Um, they're not that complicated. You just kind of have to make sure you do a little bit of geometry on there a little bit to make sure, you know, um, you know, you know what you're, you know, you have the height and the distance correctly, but that's all um that was I, that was my biggest part trying to figure out how high i wanted the arch and how you know and how wide i wanted it all right once i'm set up to see um how how you know how i want the arch to be the lines i have the painters tape on there i know you can't see from far here far away you know um how what the arch looks like because I used it on a pencil used a pencil to trace the circle but um, I will say when it comes to doing this with textured walls uh, y'all especially with an arch you definitely want to take your time and go extremely slow because um, with it being textured it definitely um, you don't get it as crisp as you would if the wall was um, completely flat.
right if you watch my kitchen um, do over video um, you guys know that I put some wall decals in my kitchen which were really cute I had a whole bunch of extra um, had extra left over and I was like trying to figure out where I wanted to put it found the perfect spot right here so what I'm doing right now is making sure I wipe the walls down I first start with Fabu Lasso and then I come with it um, with degreaser because when you do wall decals you want to make sure that your walls are extremely clean because if not those the pill and stick will fall off so you want to make sure it's extremely clean and you also want to make sure that it's dry Alright now it's time to peel and stick as y'all know I am super short so it was definitely I was having my my time trying to get those stickers everywhere but I love the fact that the wall decals that I have are like splashes and dots and stuff so um, it doesn't have to be perfect any imperfections would just give it more character so that worked out in my favor but um, it was kind of fun trying to figure out how to put all those on there. All right, here are my results. Everything came out looking really good. I am super impressed by how everything looked. Made my um my living room look like a whole new living room. I'm like, whose house is this? Whose house is this? So um, all together with everything, the um the paint I got from Home Depot was only twenty bucks. The wall decals were five dollars a piece. And I was able to do a whole wall and my backsplash in my kitchen. And I still have three little, three sheets left. So it was definitely worth it. Um, and yeah, so it was really, so you could just say $5. So $25, another $25 makeover in my living room and kitchen. And it came out really good. So you don't need to spend a million dollars to make your house look good. All you need to do is a little bit of, a little bit of uh, creativity and it, it goes a long way um, the arch look at that I love my living room the kids loved it they um, were super impressed by everything um, make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more videos um, thank you so much share comment like do all that good stuff catch you guys in my next video and as always guys God bless Mwah. Let us smile so